So this is a total case of a project that was submitted for my Team Creative Challenge last month. Um, it's a beautiful design. It's pretty easy to construct because I always say if I can do it, almost anybody can do it without muffing it up um, not too many times. So it's a gift card holder. This is my holiday version. It's using one of the papers included in the designer series paper as well. So when you open it up, look how awesome this is. There is a little pocket and let me give you the visual. Here's the gift card holder and when you close it, it gets put away. So pretty, pretty easy to make as well. I'm going to teach you how to do the little mechanism that's going to pull up the gift card. So there you go. All right, so to create this project, we are going to start with the card base. And I pre-cut and pre-embossed everything so you don't have to watch me crank away on the stamp and emboss machine. My card base is cut vertically. It's at four and a quarter by 11 inches. And I'm gonna start by folding that right here at the two inch score line it goes up this is going to create the pocket for the gift card slider and then the other score was at seven and a half and that's going to come down so again this is four and a quarter by eleven scored at two and seven and a half so this is the card base next i added a layer I texturized um, very vanilla cardstock and I used the folder, mm, can't remember the name of the folder, it's the the diamond folder. Uh, let's see if you can, yeah, you can see it pretty good on, on camera. So this measurement is five inches by three and three quarters. It adds a nice sparkle and this is gonna get attached to the front. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and trim that down because we're gonna cut it um, at one and a quarter. So I'm going to take it and on the long side, I'm going to bring it in and cut it at one and three quarters. So again, it's one and three quarters. So now I have two pieces. One is going to get secured to the bottom section and the other goes to the top section. And you know me, I like to use my Tombow liquid glue and I'm just going to be securing this right up to the edge of the short fold so a little bit of liquid adhesive and you do not want to put too much because you don't want it oozing out Oops, like that <laughs> all right so I know this year probably I will be giving a lot of gift cards this makes a nice little presentation um, you can also put cash in the, in the pocket. It works out really well that way as well. And I'm just going to come in and there's going to be about a quarter inch on each side right up to the edge of the pocket. So you've got about a quarter inch all the way around. I'm also going to do the same with the top piece and it's going to come right aligned to the, the edge of the very vanilla card base. And I'm going to give you two versions today so you can see um, what a great gift card holder this is. And again, this was this is a case from one of my team members' creative entry. I thought it was really neat. Let's see if I can find it. I'm going to show you her card as well. All right, so I've got my texturized paper, bottom and top. The next thing I'm going to do is let's see I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and what I've done is pre-cut some labels these um, labels come from the celebration labels dies they are in the mini catalog the holiday catalog they have these great labels in different sizes I'm using let's see the third from the smallest and the smallest one. One I cut out of the designer series paper and this designer series paper is included in the sale. It is the poinsettia place paper and I'm actually using two designs from the poinsettia place paper.
paper. Um, one is the, the one I'm using here for the background label and what I've done is cut it with the Celebrations dies. Then I'm also going to be cutting directly from the paper one of the other patterns so you can kind of see what I've been doing on the paper here. So here's my pattern paper, the poinsettias. Flip it over and you're going to see the pretty little green foliage. And you can actually cut directly from the paper. The poinsettia dies have one die that will cut directly from the paper here. So let's see, all I'm doing is coming in and one of these flowers, and I just kind of rotate around to see which is the flower that uh, can be cut with the die. The ones that can't be cut, I'm just hand snipping so I don't waste the paper, if that makes sense. So some of them I can come in and directly die cut. That's why you see these gaps in my designer series paper because I've just die cut using these cool poinsettia dies. So this little this die set, you can actually make your own 3D poinsettia or you can cut just flat, stamp and cut flat poinsettias. So that's what I'm using. And I've pre-cut one of the labels in the pattern paper and then the smaller one that I'm going to use for a sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment. It comes from the Poinsettia Petals stamp set. This one just says Happy Holidays. And when you see the cover of the Poinsettia pe Petals, the images are actually larger than the cover shows. That's just so they could fit them all on the same cover because it is a two um, two set package so you're going to have two cellos of clear or photopolymer stamps. So let's see this I'm going to stamp in early espresso and this is photopolymer. Ideally I would stamp on my paper piercing mat. I'm looking around to see if I have that on my table here. And let's see, here we go. So I'm going to slip it right underneath my paper and ink up mostly towards the top. So I'm going to vertically center and then put it in the top half coming right down. There we go. So that's my front sentiment. I'm going to put my ink aside. This is going to be layered onto the pattern paper flat adhesive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And it's pretty much centered. This is going to be my focal point on the front. I'm going to take about, let's see, 11 inches of ribbon. And the ribbon is the gold edged. Let's see. Oh, I thought I had it handy here. This is the metallic edge ribbon with the gold. And what's really cool about this is you can actually color the ribbon to coordinate with your papers. I've left it the vanilla color. I like just the gold accent. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap this around and I'm just going to tie it in a little knot. And I'm going to put it a little bit higher off to the left. And it's just a basic knot. I'm not even doing a bow. I just want to have a little bit of sparkle off to the side. So when I'm tying the knot, I just want to make sure I don't have any lumps. And when I come together, I'm just doing um, a perpendicular turn, making sure there's no extra lumps. I'm going to bring up the bottom tail, bring it around to the top behind, and then just pull. I'm going to be trimming that down after I um, have attached my other parts of the card. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and mount this flat adhesive onto the card base. And I'm going to be really careful. I don't want to apply any adhesive to the lower half. Only uh, 
above the ribbon and I'm actually going to put a couple of glue dots at the ribbon to keep it in place. Keep it from moving around. So I'm going to bring in some mini glue dots. So Nikki says thanks for letting her know about the ribbon. It is a really nice ribbon to have. Last a year I used up quite a bit. I was color you can color it with just the markers, the Stampin' and Write markers or the alcohol blends. And so if you can't find a ribbon in the catalog that coordinates with your your color scheme, you can always make your own. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to flat adhere that. And I'm, what I'm doing is centering horizontally and pretty much vertically. I'm putting it maybe a tad higher at the top. And what I'm going to do on the back, you can kind of see where the pattern peeks out. I'm going to attach another label that I've cut, same size, but I've cut in the very vanilla. I'm going to mount this over. It gives this part, the flap, a little bit of stability and plus it matches the card base that way. But I'm going to use flat adhesive here and just going to position that right in place. There we go. So that has just been flat adhered. There's most of the card base that's going on. While I've got my glue handy, I'm going to go ahead and, and create this pocket. This bottom flap is going to be adhered just on the sides. A really, really tiny trail of liquid glue and right up to the edges. And I do it on the flap as opposed to the card base. That way I know I'm not going beyond my uh, boundaries for adhesive. I'm just going to bring it up and that's going to be secured. That way I can slip in my little pocket. There we go. So there's our card base. I'm still not done with the front portion. Um, I did say, let's see, I am in search of my poinsettia. <laughs> let's see. I could have sworn I, oh, there it is, it's kind of hiding. There is my die cut, cut directly from the paper, and I'm going to position this on the card front, kind of like so, mm. bring that ribbon down just a little bit. And the poinsettia itself is going to be popped up with some dimensionals right underneath that. A sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and put some on two of the petals of the poinsettia right across from each other. These are just the standard size point uh, dimensional, sorry. And just bring it in, pick up the ribbon tails. It's going to come up right underneath that sentiment. We're going to be trimming off that ribbon in just a second. Okay, so we have most of our card front ready. Now we're ready to make the mechanism to pull the gift card up. So for this, I'm using same color of the, as the card base. This measures seven inches by three and a quarter, and I have pre-scored it. I scored it at two inches, and then again at six and a half. So one is for the pocket for the gift card, and I'm going to fold that up. And the other is the tab that's going to bring the, the mechanism up to reveal the gift card. So let's see. I did stamp on the pocket, so I'm going to do that now before I adhere it in position. And I'm stamping with the sentiment, again, from the stamp set that says, May Magic and Wonder Bloom This Holiday. So, again, it's a photopolymer set, so I'm going to use my piercing mat underneath. That helps with getting a good impression. 
inking up nicely and mostly towards the top. I'm going to try and see if I can get this on straight. Looks good. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of embellishment on that. I am going to take the little branch with the pine cone again from the stamp set and I'm using garden green. I am going to stamp off and just making sure everything's going good. Um, I haven't seen any comments that I'm not centered and um, you can't see what I'm doing so I hope all, all's good. I'm just assuming. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't assume. Let's see. I'm just going to check make sure I've got everything going right. So this little stamp I'm going to stamp off. It's garden green stamping off. I'm going to bring it in at the top and do a second inking again stamping off a little bit lower. I'm going to add a little bit of color for the pine cone using a blend and I'm using the light crumb cake blend. Just going to fill in the little pine cone here. There we go. All right. I am going to close that pocket again with just the liquid adhesive. And again, I'm putting it on the flap of the pocket so that I don't go over with the adhesive. That just gets tucked up and secured. Let's see. So, yeah, I do love these dies. Sandy says she loves the dies. I have been using them a lot. These celebration labels are really cool. Um, I'm seeing a lot of 3D projects made using them and I love how they layer up so nicely with the solids and the pattern. All right, so now this pocket's going to go here, but there's going to be magic when you pull it up. And the way we create that is by securing the, that flap above the score line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flatten it out. I'm going to put some adhesive here at the top and I'm going to use my stamp and seal plus. I like this seal plus. It, I get along with it a lot better than with the with just the stamp and seal. Okay, so next I'm I'm just going to bring this in. I'm going to center it um, vertically here and I'm going to bring it right up to the score line here. So let's see if I can get this I can see a little bit better when I turn it this way. Right up to the score line. There we go. And when you bring it forward, there we go, it's going to tuck inside. There you go. And look at this. Here's my gift card. Close it up. Fold away. And when I open it up, there's the gift card reveal. Isn't that cool? I, I like the mechanism of this. But wait, we're not finished. We have to add a couple of finishing touches on this. Let's see if I have my things handy here. I've already got a mess from my creating. So one of the things I love in this suite are these beaded pearls. Oh my gosh, these are beautiful. They are just amazing. It's a little trio of three pearls and I'm going to secure it to the top or right the middle of the poinsettia. I'm going to use some glue dots as soon as I find them on my table here. And I like to put like maybe a couple on it, make it a little bit more secure. And we're going to put it right here in the center. My gosh, so pretty. And I'm going to snip those ribbon tails just a tiny bit. There we go. And there. So what do you think? I love it. I think it's so pretty. Uh, just the colors are really soft and elegant. Um, it's a great little gift card holder. 
So here's mine. Let me show you. Let's see if I have the other one handy that was submitted for my creative challenge. I, don't, I probably mention this every week, but I have the most amazing team of stampers. Uh, we get together once a month. We have creative challenges on our Facebook page. And this is the card that was posted by uh, Debbie, who's on my team. It's a th hers is a thank you card, and I just fell in love with it when she showed it to me. Uh, the, of course, she used the gilded autumn paper, which I just love. Um, I think one week that was my favorite. I think every week I have a new favorite of paper. And I love the way she presented it. So pretty, and I just think it's a great way um, to present a gift card. So here's my happy holidays. And let me share with you my second version. And I'm actually going to go through it. It's same basic foundation, same construction. Let me set that aside. But this time I'm making a birthday card. And I am using the stamp set that coordinates with those celebration label dies. And because it's a birthday card, I'm using the Happiest of Birthdays stamp set. So I have to share with you this month's card swap on my team is a, a winter birthday card. So I, maybe I'm, I'm pushing the limits because I think mine is more fall than winter, but I'm still going to go with it. Um, let me walk you through this one. It's uh, virtually the same. Let me put those aside. But this time, guess what? I'm using my favorite paper from the mini catalog, that plaid tidings. I have used it on so many projects. And what I like about it is I'm not finding that I have to have the same pattern for every project. I'm pretty much using all of the patterns. So this one I picked the pretty fallish pattern that has like Cajun craze. It's either pumpkin pie or melon, mango melody. Maybe rich razzleberry. And my card base is Cajun Craze, same same uh, dimensions. Let's see if I can find my, my bone folder is what I'm looking for. And it's not, it went into hiding. So let's see if I can do this without. I'm making the pocket. Here we go. Folding down and this is where I'm really careful that these two edges meet up and I'm forcing it. Okay, so that's my card base. Remember I trim and instead of doing an embossed uh, layer, what I've done is gotten a sheet of my designer series paper. Again, I'm going to trim that down. I need a one and three quarters inch strip, so put it on the long side up to the paper trimmer. There we go. Those are my two pieces for my card front. And I'm going to use the Stampin' Seal Plus here. And this gets placed right up to the edge. About a quarter of an inch on each side, but right up to the edge of the paper there. Then I'm going to place the other one at the top. So this birthday version, I think it could be a manly card. And here's, here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that my patterns are continuous because I snipped one sheet of paper, but I have to flip it around because these aren't matching up. So just flipping it, now I've got it in the right orientation, right up to the edge. So there's the card base there. And let's see, I am going to add a Cajun Craze layer, but I'm going to add some ribbon before I layer that on. So this time I've taken an 11 inch cutting of the Bumblebee. Let's see, this is called uh, it's the 2022 in color ribbon. I was trying to see what the Bumblebee polyester ribbon. All right, so you know what I mean. This comes in all the pretty colors for this year's uh, fashion colors. The Misty Moonlight, that magenta, 
cinnamon cider, all of those colors so we get a nice sampling of it. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to knot to the far left and making sure I don't have any extra twists or turns. Let's see if I can bring that up a little bit. All the way to the far ledge and I can always scoot it over if it's not far enough at the side. And I'm going to I'm going to be layering on top. That's why I'm, I'm kind of particular about where this is landing. There we go. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and adhere the top portion to the top flap. And again, I'm going to use some liquid adhesive. I don't want to be too messy with it, but I want it on there securely. So let's see. Again, centered and just go ahead and push down on that so my birthday sentiment I mentioned it comes from the let's see happiest of birthdays stamp set there is an amazing huge wishing you the happiest of birthdays I'm going to stamp that on my very vanilla label using rich razzleberry ink and I forget who I was talking to just the other day uh, birthday cards or any cards for men are always um, in need as soon as I make them I use them which tells us we need to make more so my ink pad should be nice and juicy I added color to it just today and I'm going to center this and just FYI it's a little bit bigger than the label does doesn't whoa I almost dropped that doesn't um, deter me from using it because I still I still like the way it's placed on the label I'm going to bring it down just a little bit so I can stamp straight and then I'll push up so you can see nice inking not too bad there you go all right so that is the front sentiment and I'm going to try and move that rich razzleberry out of the way all right so I'm going to go ahead and add that to my card front and I'm going to pop that up with some dimensionals let's see so it fits over the ribbon Hopefully I, hoping I don't smear that ink because as I said I just juiced up that rich razzleberry. There are some ink pads that dry out so quickly. Not too bad. Um, so I have another team member who says um, there aren't any mistakes that can't be fixed with a rhinestone. So wherever you have extra ink just put a little sparkly rhinestone over it and voila it's covered and I can already see where I'm going to need a rhinestone so there we go there's part of the front I'm going to take a couple of those little sprigs that are still in the celebration tidings uh, labels dies and what I love about it is that they gave us two so if we want to trim up a couple of these in one pass it's doable as well as those spiders and the hearts and those little corners on on the card front so I've got two sprigs ready and they were cropped out of pumpkin pie I'm just gonna put a tiny little glue dot on the back of one little leaf I want to kind of marry these together so that I can kind of work as work with them as one unit there we go because I am going to put a spot of dimensional and I'm taking just the tiniest sliver from my mini dimensionals and I'm going to oh I think I already have one all made up I went and I cut the edge to like an eighth of an inch I'm gonna put that on the back of those two little sprigs where they meet and I'm gonna put some glue on the lower portions because they're gonna be attached to the card base and the area already has dimensionals if that makes sense I don't want to double dimensional anything that way everything comes out at the same height 
So there's my little embellishment. I'm going to bring that up way at the top here. How fun. I think that's so sweet. All right. So it's coming along. There's our card front. Almost done. And I'm not going to worry about the ribbons yet. So remember, I need to make my pocket for my gift card and again the measurement on this is seven inches by two and three quarters is that right let me see sorry three and a quarter <laughs> one more time so it's seven by three and a quarter scored at two inches and at six and a half inches and right now I'm just going to fold up that pocket and the other fold is going to be facing the other direction. I'm going to score that down. Now this is so dark I am going to add a little layer with my sentiment on the on the very vanilla. So this piece is cut at one and three quarters by three and I'll have a small border going all the way around. So on this side I am going to stamp. Let's see. I'm looking for ah, same happiest of birthday stamp sets. It says it's your day. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that right onto the very vanilla. Mm, kind of towards the top. There you go. And I'm going to add a little bit of embellishment. I'm going to take that little spray of uh, leaves, of berries. It comes from the celebration stamp set celebration tidying stamp set and I'm going to stamp in bumblebee so I'm going to bring that in and I need my piercing mats and again I'm going to ink up but I'm going to stamp off and then bring it right down here on my sentiment portion. There we go. What do you think? <laughs> I kind of like the look of it. That little sprig was all I needed. I don't think it makes it too manly. I think it's, or sorry, it doesn't detract from it being a manly card. It doesn't make it girly actually. Um, I'm just flat adhering it to the front pocket. Here we go tiny little border coming in all the way around. So I'm hoping I'm that I'll have a good turnout for my first ever creative escape. I'm kind of excited because it's been a long time since we've been able to gather as a crafters and I know um, some people are still a little bit cautious. There is going to be limited seating. We're going to have a each have our own table so there will be plenty of area to distance. Face masks are required um, when you're walking around, when you enter. Temperatures are going to be taken so we're doing all the safety precautions to make sure that we're gathering in a safe way but still able to gather. I'm pretty excited about the classes I'm going to include in the retreat. I think you're going to like them. Some Christmas cards actually and other Christmas holiday projects that we're going to be doing. Okay so what I'm doing right now I'm just using my liquid glue to secure that pocket and that just gets folded up. It's your day enjoy it and remember I need to secure it to the card base using that half inch tab. I'm going to put the stamp and seal plus there we go. And bring in my card base. I'm going to open that up and here's where I need to secure it. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to need to secure it to that score line. So I'm going to want to center this. Abut it right to the score line and then center it at top and bottom. So we have about half an inch on both sides. And I need to secure that pocket as well. Just a little bit of glue on each side. And you don't want to go too far from 
the edge because you want to have space for your card to slide in and out. Just like that, right? It's your day. And for this one, I made a little insert so that I can write a message and maybe attach the gift card here. And this little insert measures four by two and a half. So two and a half across, four high. You can write your little message right here, slip your gift card in behind. We're not quite done. We need to embellish. I need to trim up the ribbon. And I'm just gonna trim this up at an angle. That was 11 inches of ribbon. I could have gone a little bit shorter, but sometimes when I go too short, then I'm struggling to make the knot and it gets frustrating. All right, so there's mostly my completed card. I'm gonna bring in my gilded gems. These are so cool and they coordinate with so many things. I'm gonna take one of the bigger ones or the biggest ones, put it right down here at the bottom, give it some weight down here. I want a tinier one up here by the little sprigs. There. And I mentioned I saw a spot that might do with <laughs> a little sparkle. Right over here, there's a smudge. I'm going to put my rhinestone there. Thank you, Marilyn, for that suggestion that there is no mistake that a rhinestone can't cover. And there we go. Wishing you the happiest of birthdays. It looks kind of manly to me. What do you think? So when we open it up, there's our mechanism to reveal the gift card. That is my birthday version for the gift card holder. So there we go. My wishing you happiest of birthdays. My happy holidays. And of course, these were case, total case from my team members. So thank you to my team. Um, if you're ever thinking that you want to start getting dis a discount when you shop, just let me know. I'm ready to welcome more team members. I have the most amazing team. I think I've already said that at least three times today. Please don't forget about the paper sale. If you want to join in on this month's club, um, and this month's club will feature these stamp sets and this style of card, it's just a minimum qualifying order of $30. Just use the link above the video to be included. Don't forget about my coming home class on the 28th of October. And at the end of the month, the paper sale ends. That's on the, actually I think it goes beyond the 31st. Let me double check on that. I'll give you an update next week. Um, and please reserve November 21st. I need my stampers to come out and enjoy the day with me. You will be getting an email. You'll be seeing it on my Facebook page and on the blog. Thank you so much for popping by. I will see you next Friday at 2 o'clock for another Facebook Live.